Well, welcome along here to Zeged in Hungary. This is the ICF Canoe Sprint World Cup 1. Our hosts in Hungary managed to put on the only World Cup event of 2020, clearly interrupted by the COVID pandemic. And once again, safely allowing a World Cup event to take place. And now the finals taking place a couple of days after the European Olympic qualifiers. So 16 quotas snapped up for Tokyo 2020. Some will return in the hope of some World Cup glory. Plenty of exciting action. Many of the world's best canoe sprint paddlers finally returning to full international competition as the ICF Canoe Sprint World Cup getting underway in earnest with the K1 Women 200 meter final. Certainly plenty of focus on Teresa Portela, not to be confused with her namesake from Portugal. Portela and Dane Jorgensen, joint bronze medalists at the World Championships here in Zeged in 2019, earning their Olympic qualifying quota. Blanca Kish of Hungary. Deborah Kerr back on the water. The Britain having come through to grab a third quota for Great Britain. And there is Portela, the reigning world bronze medalist, five time Olympian. Although her best finish, 2012, fourth just missing out an Olympic medal. Well, it was the first semi-final that was the quickest, included Teresa Portela of Portugal. 2018 K2 200 world champion, third in behind Deborah Kerr of Great Britain, the 23-year-old Scott pipped to the post by 39-year-old Teresa Portela of Spain. Certainly, the three from the first semi-final, setting themselves up. But Emma Jorgensen has mentioned a silver medalist in Rio, and that world third will be a danger in lane four. So certainly, lanes three to five with so underway in the K1 women 200 meter final A. Deborah Kerr certainly for Great Britain, hoping to add a medal to her Olympic quota, but it's the hosts who had an early advantage, but slipping away. And it is Emma Astrand Jorgensen, who's made a strong start in lane four. And the Dane looking to convert for gold. And the Rio Olympian does just that. Looks to be just ahead of Deborah Kerr. But no doubt. Well, she had a slower time in the second semi final, but she brought her best when it mattered. Well, neck and neck with Teresa Portela of Spain at the World Championships here as they both shared third place on the podium, but she left her for dead here in the World Cup one, held in the same Hungarian city. Silver medalist in Rio, 
that bronze at the World Championships, earning her a chance to try and finally claim an Olympic gold. I'm moving all the way back. <laughs> Making clear she's not running away from the post-race interview. soon get to hear from a delighted Dane Emma, must feel so good. Emma Jorgensen yeah it's very nice um, the wind is quite tricky out there then it's come from one side headwind and the other side headwind so you have to be prepared for everything and I mean yeah it just feels really good to be back and after the last 18 months it's so good to know that you're still racing well yeah, it's, it's very nice. Last year have been quite hard and I think it has been for everyone. So it's very nice to be back and I have butterflies in my stomach to be back racing. So it's really, really good. Well done, Emma. Looking forward to seeing you in Tokyo. Yeah, oh yeah, it's so exciting. So Jorgensen kicking our live coverage off with gold for Denmark. Clearly pointing out the difficulty all the paddlers have had during the sporting lockdown. As mentioned, only one World Cup meet last year here in Zeged. But Jorgensen back with a bang and excellent form ahead of Tokyo in the summer. It's Marta Walczykiewicz of Poland nicking in for a silver ahead of Great Britain's Deborah Kerr. Rio silver medalist herself just behind Lisa Carrington, the pole. So excellent form for the 33 year old as we move on to the men's K1 200 final. Well, this one certainly has plenty of focus on the reigning Olympic and world champion Liam Heath of Great Britain. He's the only one to go sub 35 seconds in the semi finals. Carlos Aravalo, second in behind Ole Kukarek of Ukraine. But there is the reigning Olympic and world champion from Great Britain. He'll be looking to regain his title in Tokyo. Freddy Rizzi. 30-year-old finished sixth in that Rio final. Home hopes with 2010 Youth Olympic champion Sandor Totka. Sal Cravioto, a 36-year-old, a dead heat in the Rio FA, sharing bronze with Ronald Rao of Germany. And Peter Menning of Sweden. Finished 10th in that Rio final, a 2013 world and European champion. With the real focus on this man, 36 years of age, showing no signs of slowing down. The time, not the issue here. It's who crosses the line first. The Ukraine's 2018 K2 200 world bronze medalist. Kirk Harrick hoping for some individual medal success. So it's Heath in lane four for Great Britain. The clear favorite. But is there someone in the field who can produce a real shock? As red turns to white. We're ready to get underway. And underway here in the men's K1 200 meter final. All eyes on lane four and Liam Heath. But can someone take out the reigning Olympic and world champion? 
Well, so far, strong start for Hungary's Sandor Toka. But now it's when it really matters, digging deep. But it's quite close across lane four to seven. But he looks to just have the edge. Well, it's always a photo finish. We can see the Union Jack flew out first. Well, it was certainly a tough one for Liam Heath, but the 36-year-old looks to have taken it. We'll wait for confirmation. It's certainly a tight one. Well, it was tight as you like. Probably why Heath wasn't quite celebratory. Uh, as more relieved, he managed to get himself that gold and perfect preparations ahead of Tokyo next month. Well, Liam, those 200 meter races are always close, but that was ridiculously close. Yeah, I haven't got a clue what happened in that. I don't know. Did I? No idea, yeah. Like you say, it's incredibly close. You just put your head down and push as hard as you can into the headwind uh, today and uh, uh, just keep strong towards the finish and uh, lunge for that line, and, you know. It uh, never gets easier. Has it been particularly hard because it's been so long away from international racing? Uh, yeah, it's been, actually it's been actually great to be able to get out and race again. Um, you know, lots of differences, lots of um, rules, regulations and safety procedures, but it's, you know, just enough the cobwebs, really, to this regatta. Kind of seeing where everyone is, how everyone's doing with their strategies, and um, uh, really good to get the first World Cup under the way, under the belt, kind of thing. Well, we're certainly looking forward to seeing you in Tokyo later this year. Best of luck, Liam. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Well, breaking news for Liam Heath. Yes, he indeed did win, but just by 0 0.03 of a second ahead of a brilliant silver for Sandor Toka. And it was Manfredi Ritza who just pipped Ole Kukharik of Ukraine, but incredibly, just 0 0.09 seconds between the top four. It's heartbreak for Ukraine to miss out on a medal, but it's uh, that grit and determination that got the Brit over the line as he looks forward, Liam Heath, to defending his Olympic crown in Tokyo. Well, another Brit now hoping to get over the disappointment of missing out of Olympic quota on Thursday. Katie Reid heading the list, but the eyes are drawn to lane five and the reigning world champion from America, Nevin Harrison. Well, it's Harrison, who is uh, the fastest in her semi-final, the fastest across the three semi-finals to qualify for this FA 47.03 see what she has left in the tank well, Katie Reid third in her semi-final the 26 year old Scott her best result at a World Cup was 2017 in Duisburg with a bronze Germany lane 8 Spain lane 9 Georgia Three minutes to the start. Three minutes. Well, certainly, Yaris Leridis Serrillo. Du Bois of Cuba, just 19 years of age, second in behind Nevin Harrison in the semis. Lidmila Luzan of Ukraine's had a great time here in Zeged, but here is Harrison, won her world crown here two years ago, falling on from. Pan American gold, the first American to win a world championship in sprint canoe, and all before she's even left her teens. 
Well, Maria Cobrera, Cobrera had a very impressive Thursday as she earned a chance of an Olympic dream, going sub-50, a 29-year-old having already seen her hero, Teresa Portela, compete earlier in the day, hoping to emulate her. Mariama Kerdekashvili of Georgia was the fastest in her heat for this new Olympic event, but in the final, pipped by just 0.36 of a second. Georgia without a canoe quota for Tokyo 2020. There will be a last chance saloon next week in Russia. But for now, the focus here, Nevin Harrison, certainly the one to beat. Certainly, Luzan, the 2014 Youth Olympic Games silver medalist, went within centimetres of winning the K1000 and C1200, respectively, in last year's World Cup event held in September. The only one that managed to make the international calendar, but turned that form around just an hour later to take gold in the K1 and C1 500 metre races. Can she... Get over the hump this time in the C1-200. This World Cup won a lot competing for the first time since the COVID lockdown. We've already heard from our gold medalists from the opening two races at their delight at being back. How will they fare in the final? Ready, set. Underway here in the C1 women 200 meter final, Nevin Harrison the world champion in lane five, looking to add a World Cup gold. Certainly a strong start. Hovering around the 90 paddle rate. Trying to hold off the Luzan of Ukraine. Just digging away, Luzan looking for very long strides, but it's Nevin Harrison pushing away, but she's getting a little bit of competition from Dorota Borowska. But she beats her in the semis. She's going to beat the field here in the final. Luzan looks to have taken silver. Cuban bronze will wait for confirmation, but no doubts on Nevin Harrison. All smiles. And she realizes she's once again a gold medalist in Zeged. Teenage sensation from America, adding a World Cup goal Nevin, to the uh, World Championship last. It's good for you, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's my it's my course. <laughs> it's amazing to be back. I love it here. How did you feel coming into today's race? The last year or so, 18 months has been so difficult. Sorry, I was nervous for sure. Um, I didn't have my best race last year at the World Cup, so I was really excited to get out here and try to do a better job <laughs> than I did before and. I'm happy with it. Um, still have little tweaks here and there that uh, I'm going to make before Tokyo, but yeah, it's really exciting. You're getting excited now about the Olympics? Oh yeah, I think terrified is a better word. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. My girls here, they're amazing. I love all of them. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what we can do. It's our first year in the Olympics, so it's going to be awesome. We're going to be excited to see you there. Congratulations today. We look forward to seeing you in Tokyo. Thank you so much. 
Well, a goal two years ago in the World Championships, missing out in September last year, but this time Nevin Harrison back on top of the podium. And in fact, it was Cirilo Dubas of Cuba who pipped Ukraine's Luzan to the silver, the Ukrainian third on the podium, heading ahead of Dorota Borowska of Poland. Certainly some wind causing some issues, but overall, excellent conditions here. Certainly there was a spell yesterday where it absolutely bucketed down with rain. And certainly seems a lot clearer today ahead of a highly anticipated final, the K1 men 1000 meters. But before that, the medal ceremony for the K1 women 200 meters. Medal warning ceremony for women's K1 200 meters. The medals are presented by Mr. Simon Thompson, Secretary General of the International Canoe Federation. Bronze medalist at the ICF Canoe Sprint and Para Canoe World Cup, Deborah Kerr, representing Great Britain. Silver medalist, Marta Wajcikiewicz, representing Poland. Gold medalist, Emma Astrand Jorgensen, representing Denmark.
Congratulations. Medals handed out the women's K1 200 meters and a fabulous victory for Denmark's Emma Jorgensen. You'll hope to impress at the Olympics again after winning a silver in the K1 500 in Rio. So four minutes away from this highly anticipated the wrong list up as we get excited for the K1 men 1000 MA final three world champions since the Rio Games certainly shaping up to be one of the races of the weekend and all three of the podium from the 2019 World Championships here in attendance. In particular, reigning world champion Balint Kopash, the only one missing out of the real top dogs, the Olympic champion Marcus Waltz of Spain, not in attendance. There is, alongside Kopash, Joseph Dostal, three-time Olympic medalist. And along with that, Kopash's nemesis, Fernando Pimenta of Portugal, London Games silver medalist in K2, 1,000, nine times a world medalist, the 2018 world champion. Portugal. Joseph Dostal was the Rio flag bearer for the Czech Republic, beaten by Marcus Walsh in that final Pimenta fifth. This looking like a dress rehearsal for the Tokyo final. There in your picture, Arthur Peters of Belgium, won Olympic berth for his country on Thursday. Could the 2014 junior world champion make a statement here? Two minutes to the start of race number 191. K1 man, 1,000 meters. Ali Yenia of Belarus. Or both, please come to the starting area in your lane. Here is Two Joseph Dostal. As mentioned, a three time Olympic medalist. Two bronze in K4. But Jakob Schoff looking to really push off the 21 year old German, a two time world champion in K4 in 2018 and K2 in Zeged. Looking for some experience ahead of the Olympic Games. That man in your picture, once again going up against Pimenta, Kopash. And the Portuguese having a real battle, rekindling the rivalry from last year's World Cup meet when they both won a gold apiece. Bojan Zedlar of Serbia, under 23,000 European champion, missed out on Olympic berth on Thursday. So it's a high quality field. Is it going to be the established guard to hit the podium? Or is there going to be a young gun to blast their way into a surprise shoff? Certainly, the main focus is for that. World champion K4 and K2 now looking to make that step up in K1. But it's Balint Kopash on his home course, on his own Hungarian water who will want to stamp his authority ahead of the final. Just moments away from getting underway. Ready, set. So underway in the K1 men 1,000 metre final. 
reigning world champion Balint Kopash of Hungary recorded the fastest semi-final time. Czech Republic's Josef Dostal and 2018 world champion from Portugal Fernando Piminta also impressed in what were perfect racing conditions. We've heard there's some challenges with the wind as always would be expected. We'll see how they manage themselves. We saw the picture there of Jakob Schoff of Germany. Big opportunity to prove himself in K1 after successfully partnering three-time Olympian Max Hoff to that world title mentioned two years ago here in Zeged. Well, Pimenta now just taking slender advantage over the German. Pimenta certainly went hard in the 5,000 in the World Cup last year, managed to hold off the fight back from Kopash before the roles were reversed. Not quite going hell for leather. A little bit more pace and precision. So four boats across the middle. Somewhat an expected formation. As Josef Dostal, Jakob Schuf, Balen Kopash and Fernando Pimenta look to be the main battle for the podium. There are only three medals on offer. So one from four is going to be dropped. Pimenta with the marginal advantage, but really not much to write home about. It's Dolstal with the slight edge on the paddle rates, but looks like they're all waiting to see who's going to light the torch paper before really going for it. But it's a bit of a stronger push from Josef Dostal. As mentioned, Flag bearer for the Czech Republic in Rio. Four time world and European gold medalist. Well, Kopas just hanging on the back of the boats, sizing up the opposition and trusting his explosive power. All about timing here. When to really let go Jakob Schuf gaining over a boat advantage over Kopas and Pimenta so far Dostal the man to keep up with him well it's all about holding your nerve and knowing exactly what's at stake. But it's going to be a tremendous victory for the young gun from Germany. Well, we were just waiting and waiting for Copa and Pimenta to unleash the guns. But it's Jakob Schoff who's beaten the three podium from the World Champions two years ago. Look at the emotion. Streaming out, a two-time world champion in K4 and K2. And now he's beating the best in the business to a World Cup K1 goal.
Well, a quite stunning result. Kopash, the man to miss out on the podium, just didn't seem to have the power and pace you'd normally expect from the reigning world champion. We'll see how things fare come the Olympics, but what a major breakthrough at K1 for Jakob Schoff of Germany, a 21-year-old golden in Jakob, Zegen. congratulations. Yesterday you said you wanted to see how you could go in this race. Yeah. How did you go? Yeah, it, it was fine because <laughs> I can do what I would like to do. I know all the... Sorry, my, my breath. I know all my uh, strength and Max told me so much things and my trainers also. And I do what they talk. It's, it's a win for me and my coach and Max Hoff, not only me as an athlete. You've beaten two world champions. The last two world champions, you've beaten them today. Surely you must want to do this in the Olympics. <sighs> yeah. I think the Olympics, uh, they told their own stories. You can see um, the last years. Um, Olympic Games are a dream. To take part there is a dream for me. And so I would like to fly to Tokyo to Olympic Games. And then I dream from the position which I got get. And okay, that's all. So Olympic Games are the dr big dream, nothing else. Great, great result today. Well done, Jakob. Thank you very much. Well, not thinking too far ahead, but mentioning the great support from Max Hoff, who he won the K2 world title with. Himself, a gold medalist in K4 in Rio, and a bronze medalist in K1000 2012. So Hoff, plenty to bestow upon Schoff, but he had to go out and do it, beating Dostal by almost a second, with Pimenta third, um, and Kopash failing to make the podium. The Olympics will be another beast, but a stunning gold ahead of now. The C1 men, 1,000 meters. Sergei Tarnovshi was the fastest in qualifying. Now having to try and overcome the world champion from Brazil is a Kias Kiaros Dos Santos. Certainly a high quality field. Scheibener, 24 year old, a 2017 C4 world champion, C4 silver medalist two years ago in Zeged. Now in the C1 boat, 2020 World Cup, first individual medal, bronze for Philippe Dovrak, Martin Fusca. Sidling alongside Tavanossi. Who managed to get European berth for Moldova, but takes on now the reigning world champion, three time Olympic medalist in Rio. Coming into the start, please. Coming the start, it's also please. challenged from 2019 junior start, world please. champion Jose Ramon Pelier Cordova and Adrien Barr of France. Will be going back to the Olympics after a final B silver in Rio. 29 year old taking bronze at the World Championships here in 2019. Castodin Diba of Romania, under 23 world and European 1000 silver medalist, a senior world FB silver winner. This a whole different kettle of fish. As we await the kickoff, Alquieros well, dos Santos, the first Brazilian athlete to win three medals at a single games, the first sprint canoeist of any nationality to do so. And we're underway in the C1 men 1000 meter final. Tarnoshi of Moldova, the fastest in qualifying. And looking to be the quickest off the mark. 
And out on the far, far side, Germany's Konrad Robin Schreibner must be uh, inspired by the brilliant victory from Jakob Schuff in the K1 event. Although an awful long way to go. But he certainly decided to empty the tank early. So fascinating, the tactics clearly compared to the 200 meters say it's a question of dumping it all out quickly here so much about where will you be placed come the ride into the final furlong at the moment it's Scheibner who's decided his best chance is to go hard leading out Sergei Tarnovsky, who himself was a bronze medalist in Rio, only to have it ripped from him after a failed doping test. Now trying to rebuild his career and reputation. They're hoping he'll put down to youthful error. Now just 23 years of age. Certainly. It will be a big surprise if the 24-year-old from Germany is able to maintain this advantage. Certainly asking questions of the boats behind, particular Carlos Dos Santos, world champion. One here in Zeged, six-time world champion, cross disciplines. Adrian Bayer, as mentioned, was third on the podium as the Brazilian received that world crown. Just wants to see if he can hold on to this. Still got a pretty good paddle rate compared to his rivals. Only the Cuban matching him thus far. Jose Ramon, Valeria Cordoba. As mentioned, the 2019 junior world champion. He was ninth in the senior world final two years ago. His maiden and only World Cup. There's a thousand gold. A long way to go to manage that. But for now, what an attempt from Con Robin Schneibener. And he's still holding off. Well, it's a weakening performance from Tarnovsky. But it's the Brazilian who's looking for a brilliant finish. He's got some time to make up. At the moment, Konrad Robin Schneibner looking to do what his compatriot did in the K1 distance. Can he produce a stunning tail-to-tail -tail victory? It looks like he may have done enough as he comes towards the line. It's going to be an outrageous gold for Germany. Back to back from K1 to C1. From start to finish, he went hard. And that is a magnificent achievement at 24 years of age. Winning his first C1 gold medal at a World Cup.
Well, stunning calculation from Conrad Robin Schneider as he takes gold ahead of the reigning world champion, Queiroz Dos Santos of Brazil. And a wonderful double for Germany. Jakob Schuff winning ahead of reigning world champion, Pan Kopasch. 2018 champion Pimenta, as well as Czech silver medalist Joseph Dostal. And this time, from start to finish, Schneider. Congratulations. One We're so used to seeing Sebastian Brendel's name number one. Today, we have a new German name at number one. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good to finally uh, being able to compete for, uh, in the seniors, and winning is even nicer. <laughs> yeah. In lane one, which I'm sure makes it a little bit more difficult, but how hard was it for you out there today? Uh, actually, my strategy was to get to lane one too, so I can uh, pull my own race because we have such big names in the field. And I just wanted to do the best I could, and that's why I went for lane one. And what about the future for you now? What, what, what sort of goals do you have? <laughs> I'm also racing the C2000 later this day. So we still have selection in this boat, and that's the next step. And then after that, we'll see what's coming regarding Tokyo. Well, you certainly made a statement today. Well done, Conrad. Thank you. I'll be back for the C2 and potential spot at the Olympics, but a stunning two-second victory over reigning world champion Queiroz Dos Santos, Martin Fuxa of the Czech Republic, Pipping Pelier Cordoba of Cuba to the bronze medal. Tarnovski eventually fading to finish fifth. So next, the K1 women 1,000 meters. Their chance to take on a long distance. This itself non-Olympic event world champion a home star tamara Sitspes, not in attendance instead a couple other hungarians hoping to fly the flag Adriana kakol just 19 years of age alongside junior world k4 500 champion catherine rask of denmark Vera Diakova in lane three for Russia. Maria Verik of Norway, 21 years of age, a five-time world junior medalist with three goals to her name. And now Hungarian youth taking to the water. Messi Kolami, 18 years of age, three-time gold medalist at the junior worlds two years ago. And Olga Bako, 20-year-old also having medals in the junior levels. Magazatsa Pulaska of Poland, a world and European under 23, K1 500 silver medalist. Anna Maria Kovacinovic, last international competition was here in Zeged when she finished fourth in the World B final. She's never medaled at a world championships. Christina Pedek of Serbia, 34 years of age, took a 5,000 meter bronze at the World Cup meet last year, five years on from her last medal, which was a 1,000 world silver and a World Cup bronze. Underway in the K1 women 1,000 meter final. Well, two great upsets in the men's K1 and C1 over this distance. There'll be a similar story, although not quite the level of field in the men's event. So a huge opportunity for a relatively young field. Catherine Rask taking her turn individually 
having been a junior world champion at K4, 500. So doubling up on her own. Hit the minute mark, the split time at 7.50, and it is the Dane who continues to keep just a little advantage over the Hungarian duo. Certainly got an advantage in the paddle rates. Question of whether she can maintain it, but as we saw in the C1 men's final, Scheimner went out hard. In the end, was able to maintain this one. A leisurely pace in comparison. In lane five, Hungarians hope on Kolalmi. Three-time gold medalist at the 2019 Junior World Championships. All at 500 meters in K1, K2 and K4. Now, can she make something happen at the senior level? So it's Rask followed by Kualmi, and then Olga Bako hoping to make a two podium filled with Hungarians. Although Norway with Maria Verik will have something to say about that, the 21 year old. There is Koalmi, who now starts to stride away. Rask falling back somewhat, as now Maria Verik holds the current position of second. Well, Olga Bako following her compatriot, the 20 year old. A K1 junior, 1,000 silver medalist in 2018. 2019, a world K2 under 23 champion. So at the moment, it's a Hungarian 1-3, split by Verik of Norway. World champion hailing from Hungary. And can they maintain National dominance over this distance. And sadly, won't be an opportunity to hit the Olympics, but as we've heard from a lot of the paddlers, huge emotions at being able to be back on the water, top international level in this highly anticipated World Cup. And it looks like it is going to be a first home gold. More than a boat length ahead as the cheers come for Amesi Konami. Silver for Norway and Maria Verik. But it's a hungry 1-3 Olga Bako crossing to join her compatriot on the podium. But it's gold for... Koalmi.
Congratulations. How do you feel to win? Thank you. It was a very hard race, but I'm very happy. Is it always nice to race in Zeged? Uh, the crowd's not here, but it's still your home course. Uh, I love race in Zeged, uh, and it's a fantastic race. Yes. Yes, it is. We agree with you. Congratulations. Thanks well done. So So first gold for Hosea and Zeged, and it's a Messi Kolalmi who managed to reel in Catherine Rascu, the Dane eventually finishing fifth and leading in with a 2.17 second advantage over Maria Verik and a Hungarian 1-3 with Olga Paco comfortably in at third. So the 1,000 meter distances over and out. The time for their medals. As the K1 men, 1,000 medals will be given out. We'll be back at 12.34 for the K2 men's 500 meter final. ICF Canoe Sprint and Paracanoe World Cup, Fernando Pimenta representing Portugal. representing the Czech Republic. Gold medalist Jakob Schopf representing Germany. Stunning victory in a quite stunning field. Jakob Schuff, Germany, taking a gold ahead of reigning and former world champions. Germany having a stunning day, K1 and C1, 1,000 meter finals. Well, next up, we're doubling up. It's the K2 men 500 meter final. And 
it uh, easy to draw eyes to the Spanish pairing, in particular Marcus Waltz of Spain, the reigning Rio champion in K1. Also as a world champion 2017 in Rashise, Czech Republic in K2 500. So no stranger to the event, reigning world champions. Thayenka and Nat Chinchik not in attendance. Instead, I'll be looking to the pairing of Tratsiaku and Lit Vinau. Head of this Tratsiaku, the elder 27, uh, 2019 European Games K1 200 champion. Alongside the young Lit Vinau, K2 Junior World Champion. Well, Marcus Waltz not involved in that dramatic men's 1000. But the Rio champion, alongside compatriot Rodrigo Germad. The French book of Le Mouel and Le Floche de Cochemont. There is the second Belarusian boat, and with it, one half of the reigning champions. This time, Dmitry Nasinshuk alongside Mikita. Bori Kau. So one half of the reigning world champions looking to lead out Belarus. Can they do what the Hungarians did in the women's race at C1 K1000? And take up two places on the podium. And Marcus Walls, the Spanish boat, certainly have something to say about that. meter final well this a non-olympic event possibly why marcus waltz had to move up to 1000 to follow his olympic dream incredible to see him win out when certainly in terms of world championships and european it's been the 500 that's dominated between k1 k2 and k4 a two-time k4 european champion well as that one World crown in 2017 in this event. And certainly the Olympic champion leading from the front, but a strong attack from the Ukrainians. Danilenko and Kukaric certainly firing away in their big attempt to get amongst the medals. A big push from the Ukrainian boat. Certainly a tough distance. Spain heading back for a slender advantage. Ukraine trying to hold on, but it's Spain who are coming through strongly. And it's Marcus Waltz who leads Spain to waltz over the line for gold. Well, certainly gave it everything, Rodrigo Jaramari. 
watching Waltz with all smiles as they take a Spanish gold in the men's C2 500. Impressive from the Spanish duo, although they don't look like they're ready for any post-race interviews as they paddle away into the distance. A strong effort holding off the challenge of the Ukrainian duo. Marcus Walls, born in Oxford to a British mother and a German father, although the family moved to Mallorca when Walls was just three months old. Mix of cultures, but one culture he's certainly au fait with is that winning another gold for the Rio champion in K1. So Spain with K2, men 500 meter victory. So Spain in gold. Eventually, the Belarusians found their form to take the silver. That's in Shuk, unable to regain gold here in Seged, having done so in the World Cup, uh, the World Championships, as Ukraine eventually having to settle for a bronze, the second of the Belarusian boats missing out on a medal. And finally, get a chance to hear from the successful Spanish duo. You can certainly see how much they have to put in to the effort of winning. Nice little suntan, maybe hard to find here in Seged. But hopefully soon to hear from Marcus Waltz and Rodrigo Garrande after they took gold instead. Sadly, not time. C1 women's 500 meter race waits for no man. Another of the non Olympic events. World champion Elena Nazrova of Belarus. Certainly, Belarusians will hope for better. Lena Nazarova, two-time world gold medalist and, as mentioned, reigning 500 champion with a world best time. Certainly the women to be all the way out, though, in lane one. But as we've seen, it can be profitable, as Germany showed earlier. I can see back on the water after picking up a bronze earlier in the day, a sparkling Luzan taking her second attempt. As mentioned last time, the World Cup last year, she got over a disappointment of a silver to upgrade to gold. Took a bronze in the C1 women 200 meter final behind Cyrilo Dubos of Cuba and of course world champion Nevin Harrison making up for disappointment in the World Cup last year with gold here 
ahead of the Olympic Games. Waiting for the sign to start. A couple of Poles and Ukrainians holding the center stage. Magda Stani alongside. Katarina Serpereczyk with Luzan alongside Anastasia Cetverikova. Cetverikova having her breakthrough in the 2019 World Cup, won in Poznan. Four medals, C1 500 gold, C2 bronze, 200 500, and a mixed C2 500 to add into the mix. She'll have a battle on to deny her compatriot, she's a year older, 24. So underway in the C1 women 500 meter final. Can the reigning world champion Elena Nazdrova win from lane one? Once again, it's Luzan. She's putting herself right in contention from the off. Also a strong start from her compatriot. Shet Verikova, lane six. Looking on as Luzan just strides away from the field. Purple perfection at the moment. Reigning world champion as Drova is 22 years of age, but a long way back, and it doesn't look like anyone is going to deny Luzan. And once again, disappointed in the shorter distance of 200, but looks dominant over 500. Well, Poland in second and third, Jana Zetek from the Czech Republic out of the picture. And it's Ukraine and Poland battling. Although no real doubts about the gold as things stand. Magda Stanning of Poland, 28, the 2017 World Cup C15000 bronze medalist. And her teenage compatriot, Sir Perek Kiavic, 2019 C1 Junior 200 bronze medalist and a 2019 World Junior 200 B final gold medalist. But it's Luzan who is losing all around her on her determined drive to upgrade her 200 bronze for a 500 meter gold. And she's gonna do it in style, almost a two boat length advantage. And it is a stunning victory for Luzan. And Ukraine do get the one two. And in the end, Poland dropping off the podium as Giada Paragato came through, but it's this woman once again who comes up trumps in Zeged after an initial disappointment. Bronze at 200, but golden at 500.
Hard? Was it difficult today for you? I don't know what to say. Well done, congratulations. I feel, I feel. Good job. Well, just as she was in her race, quick and sharp with her comments, and clearly delighted to add gold to her bronze from earlier in the day. A fabulous performance to take top spot on the podium. Ukraine happily locking out a couple of medals in that C1 women's 500 meter final. There is the final confirmed result. Luzan, not losing any sleep as she takes gold. Shet Verkova making it a Ukrainian one too, with Bragato sneaking in to grab the hosts. Hungary, a bull string bronze. Next up, the medal ceremony for the K1 men, 200 meters. Just three races left over live coverage here from Zegens. World Cup one, with the World Cup two taking place in Russia next week. Along with it, a final World Olympic qualifier. Last chance saloon for Tokyo. And now the medals for K1 men. We'll be back with the men's C2 500 final. Just five minutes to one. Önepélyes eredmény hirdetés a férfi kajak 1-es 200 méteres versenyszámban. Az érmeket Fárai Péter úr, a Magyar Kajakenu Szövetség alelnöke adja át. Medal warning ceremony for men in kayak singles in 200 meters. The medals are presented by Mr. Peter Karai, Vice President of the Hungarian Canoe Federation. Bronze medalist at the ICF Canoe Sprint and Para Canoe World Cup. Bronze Irmes, az ICF Gyorsasági és Para Kajak Canoe Világkupán. And Freddy Rizza, representing Italy, Olaszország. Ezüstérmes, Tótka Sándor, Magyarország, Hungary. Aranyérmes, Gold Medalist, Liam is representing Great Britain, and Britannia. Gratulado. Congratulations. Tokyo, 
tough times. Still very much in this COVID nightmare. But as Zeged and others have shown, still possible to put on top class international sport. Uh, what a buzz for the athletes to be back out on the water. Uh, shown in their excitement to be here in Zeged. Olympic dreams started off the weekend on Thursday. Now our final three races of day one of the finals, the men's 500 seat two final A. Well, the world champions not here, Xing and Li of China not taking part. That means it's home advantage to the reigning world silver medalists in this non-Olympic event. Jonathan Hadju and Adam Fekete here to try and win on home water. seen already throughout the day plenty of upsets particularly in the men's K and C1000 Germany came out on top certainly some of the paddlers will be brushing off the cobwebs from the inactivity over the long shutdown Russia with double hope. Italy as well with two boats, one with the brothers, Krasian, Nikolai and Sergei. 10 years apart, the brothers. 36 year old Sergei alongside his younger brother, Nikolai, winning world bronze together in 2018. Nikolai himself, a European champion at C2500. The other Italian boat, Daniele Santini and Luca in Colingo. So as mentioned, the Chinese world champions not here. Seam advantage, Hungary. Wait to see if that is the case. So lane six, the Hungarian champions underway here in the C2 men 500 meter final. Can the world silver medalists from Hungary make their way to the top of the podium in this World Cup one in 2021? A slow start for the Krasian brothers. Find themselves somewhat in arrears as now. Hadju uh, and Fekete start to pile on the pressure. But Spain now hooking their head out. Cayetano Garcia and Pablo Martinez. It was uh, Spanish bronze at the World Championships in 2019. City. Benavides and Antoni Segura, and they'll be sure to be cheering on their compatriots as they have a slender advantage. Still having to take a look at the Brazilian pairing on the far side in lane one. 
but it's Spain leading the way ahead of Hungary and Ukraine. Brazil in with a shout of a medal. Certainly going to be tight. The Spanish just look to have stiffened up a little bit as Hungary try and fight back. But have they got something left in the tank to find them over the line? It's going to be close. It's going to be also oh close. But Spain take it. Well, what an achievement. Martinez and Garcia did what Benavides and Segura couldn't two years ago here in Seged. And that's beat Adjua Fekete. Well, almost relief as Spain take gold. Congratulations, you two. You've had Spanish a, a good boat week with, gold. Uh, with the yeah. Olympic qualifiers and now here. Yeah. Yeah. The week of the dreams. <laughs> it starts good and it continues better, maybe. <laughs> how, hard, how hard was it to go out and paddle today after what you've already been doing this week? Uh, it's very hard because the races that we have done the, the days before, it's in the body. But we go with all the hair and it is going well. Yeah, you're paddling very well. You must feel very good about where you are right now. Yeah. I, can, I don't hear you now. <laughs> Congratulations, well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I think it's clear to see they put quite a lot into that. A terrific victory knowing you're in a field with the reigning world silver medalists and to beat them by 0.3 seconds, holding on to the advantage they'd hard earned to cross the line. Ukraine grabbing a bronze with Rogeles and Rybachuk. So the penultimate race of our live coverage, the women's K2 500 meter final. It's the German pairing with the quickest qualifying time, Herring Pradler and Deitze. It's about converting when it matters most. Belarusian world champions, Hungarian Olympic champions. So Dominika Puto and Kolo Zeshik. Puto, the older of the two, 25, two years older. Silver medalist, 2016 in a World Cup one. K2 200 silver medalist, the world meet two years ago. The Belgians, Hermian Peters, haven't seen her. Younger brother, 2016 Olympian Arthur, her an Olympic berth. 
looking to keep it a successful weekend for the Petters household. Riding alongside Elise Borowek. Certainly, lane four with Herring Bradler and Detsy. K4 Olympic silver medalists. Separately, they've been part of winning moments with the other two from that K4 team. Herring Pradler won world gold in 2015 with Steffi Kry Gerstein, where Dietze, at 33 years old and already a K2 Olympic gold medalist in London 2012 with Francisca Weber. Overall, four Olympic medals won. In fact, overall, Dietze with 35 major medals. Called to the starting line ahead of the women's 500 meter K2 final getting underway. Certainly will be a challenge for the Germans in lane four with the Slovenian boat of Bono Marenko Janic and Anja Osterman. Slovenians. So underway in the K2 women 500 meter final. The Germans quickest in qualifying, but can they convert to gold? And certainly they look like that's exactly their objective from the off. Not leaving anything to chance, at least not in the opening. 50 meters. Both enjoyed Olympic success together. And now looking for a World Cup gold in Seged. We'll have to hold off Slovenian veteran Sprela Ponomarink Janik, 39 year old, 2008 Olympian. Together with Osterman, they won world silver and bronze in Zeged two years ago to allow them access to the Olympics. But at the moment, they're being overpowered. Do they have time and strength to hit back? They've got to make up a whole boat length. And every paddle stroke running out of time to stop this German juggernaut. It's been a fabulous day in the A finals here in Zeged. And it's going to be more glorious golds for Germany as they cross the line at first. And Poland look like they've taken the silver ahead of Slovenia. We'll wait for confirmation, but no doubt who's number one. Dietze and Heron Pradler, absolutely dominant.
Uh, Sabrina and Tina, great win. You look like you had an important message to give out there today. Have you any a message? Our message was to win. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been an interesting couple of years for the K2, for the 500 for Germany, but are you ready now? You've got the boat qualified. Are you ready for the Olympics now? Yeah, I think so. We hope. <laughs> we don't know, but I think the coaches are, uh, after this World Cup, nominate the Olympic team. Maybe, oh, I think with the win. <laughs> We are qualified. So did, you have it, did you have that in mind today, that that was important, that that's why you needed to go so well today? Yeah, of course. It was very important to win, and I think we did it. You certainly yeah. did do it. Congratulations, enjoy. Thank you. Well, leaving nothing to doubt. That will be tough to beat. Olympic. Silver medalists together in the K4. Now a dynamic duo taking gold here. In the World Cup one in Zeged. Poland snatching silver ahead of Slovenian pairing. He'll have to settle for bronze. So last up. The K1 men 500 meter final. They've had a long wait for a chance now to get out on the water. So Rene Holsten Poulsen, the Dane, the great Dane, was out earlier in the day. The three time Olympian looking for a FA goal to go with his earlier lower final victory. Tom Liebescher, German reigning world champion, but uh, Liebescher leaving it to a German teenager to fly the flag as Rennie Holsten Poulsen missed out on qualifying for a fourth Olympic Games. The Beijing K2000 meter silver medalist will be hoping he might have a chance to earn it in Russia. Benedek Tibor Kosh, two time junior world goals in K1500 and 1000. Lars Magna Ulvang of Norway, two time world silver medalist, but both coming in B finals. Alessandro Nietzsche, never achieved an individual FA medal. Bensenaras of Hungary, 25 year old world and European bronze medalist at K1 500. Moritz Willy Florstedt, 19 year old flying the flag for the reigning world champions. Slavomir Vitschak, 2015 K2 junior world silver medalist. And in lane nine, Martin Anathel of Sweden. An under 23 world thousand champion yet to really make the same mark in the seniors. Waiting to get underway. Can Rennie Holstead Poulsen? Sure, he's still got it in a, a final. Will one of the young guns come through? Final. 
Rene Holsten Poulsen taking gold K1 men 1000 meter final, but that in the B final. Hoping to show something in this K1 men 500 meter final. Certainly not having his own way as it's the Italian to push on. Janetti, as mentioned, the 28 year old has never won an individual FA medal. Certainly looking to make a statement early doors. Can he hold on? Slender advantage over the two Danish boats. And Norway edging back in front. Norway, Italy, Denmark and Hungary. Though the latter two swapping places, very tight final. Who's got some juice left to really push for the finishing line? And it is Poulsen. The far side in lane two looks to have an advantage. As they come into the final stretch. As they go for the line. Well, it's going to be a photo finish, but it looks like Hungary might have come through. And looks to have snatched gold. From the fingertips of Poulsen, Ben Sinaras of Hungary. The 25 year old with the world and European bronze K1 500 meters, now with a World Cup gold. Well, Lester's to the line, bringing Hungary gold, of which he didn't even know. Breaking news to Nadas on his home water. Absolute delight for sure. Well, Bench, you, you seem a little surprised that you won that race. Uh, yeah, because... Uh, wind from that side and uh, when I finished this race I, I check uh, left and I see Rene I don't know uh, I am or Rene is the first but I am a first I'm really really happy nice to win here in Zeged of course uh, no crowd but uh, it's always nice to win in, on your home course yeah it's a it's a it's amazing because it's a single race and uh, and I love uh, 500 meter so I'm happy <laughs> congratulations well done thank you very much well he saw the three-time Olympian Poulsen but in fact he took him by just 0 0.03 seconds a Danish 2-3 with Asmul coming through to edge onto the podium. Well, it's been great Germany. Three gold medals across our finals. Double for Spain in the hosts Hungary. Certainly a dramatic first day. Ahead of the finale tomorrow. 
of this return to top class paddling.